All right, hey everybody, Natalie Madison with Artisan Cakes here. I'm getting ready to do some live action on our YouTube channel. We are talking about poinsettia flowers using Sugar Delights botanically correct veiners through their line called Simply Nature. So I love everything about these veiners, mainly the fact that they are truly botanically correct and I don't have to work nearly as hard to get the perfect details to create the perfect flowers. So in the past, I would spend, oh my gosh, hours, hours, creating each little bump, every little vein, but now I can actually do a shortened version, a much faster version. So we're gonna give a couple of moments for people to tune in, and as they're tuning in, I'm just going to finish my last tech, tech checks. Tick, tick, check, tick, tick, check. And if you are joining us, we are getting ready to talk about Sugar Delights veiners and cutter sets. I know we have this moment of silence, but I promise we'll get to it in a short moment. I'm just double checking networking. And here we go. All right, so Simply Nature, botanically correct products are fantabulous. And if you haven't had a chance to investigate what they offer, they offer beautiful cutters and veiners and every one of their veiners is so detailed. Um, I mean, so detailed. I don't know if you can see all of this, so I'm just going to bring this up close. Um, this veiner has all of the little parts and pieces, all of the individual textures, veins, and little nubs and bumps necessary to make this look like a true leaf. This one happens to be the poppy leaf. Um, and I'm just gonna bring it down here for you guys to take a quick look in case you haven't gone over to our YouTube channel yet. Um, not only does it have the veiner for the front side, but Simply Nature has gone one step further and Sugar Delights has gone through and created the back side. So as you create your individual leaves, you would literally sandwich the two parts together and create the texture necessary for both top and bottom. The beauty of this, most of them have cutters to match. So no more having to put it in the middle and try to like get the excess off. You have cutters that fit each veiner like so. Isn't that cool? All right, so we've got our cutters and our veiners, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about poinsettias, because poinsettias truly are, you know, the flower of the season as soon as we move into November and December. So let me start with just a little bit of gum paste. Move my, move my stuff around. A little bit of gum paste on a slightly cornstarch surface. And I chose a soft pink, color because I absolutely love poinsettias when they go from this pink color and they start to turn that shade of red. There's something about those that really draw me and they're usually the ones I end up purchasing um, for my own personal home use. So I'm going to play with that color. I've got my little poosh of cornstarch, not too much, and then roll this as thin as you can get it. but it doesn't have to be too thin. 
especially if you're wiring it. You want it to be wide enough for the wires. I think today we probably won't play around with wires because I really want to just demonstrate the level of detail that comes with these veiners. So I've got my gum paste in place and I'm just going to place my cutter down and you notice I did a little wiggle. That wiggle helps break through that gum paste and making sure I have a clean cut. So if I don't have a clean cut, those edges will be a little rough. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, not in this case, but sometimes we want a nice clean cut. So now that I have that cut out to match my veiner, I am going to thin the edges slightly. So this is just a foam board. You can find that here or pretty much any craft supply store, but do buy it here. Um, this is a foam board and it's a firm foam. And I have my gum paste in place. And now I'm going to take my ball tool and just rub it on the outside edge. Half of the ball is on the gum paste and half of it is over on the foam. So I am splitting the difference. And what this does is thin out the outside edges of the gum paste. And by thinning out those outside edges, we make this feel a little more like a true petal. This is also what we do to make ruffles. and just go all the way around the petal. Once you've done that, you're going to place your bottom veiner and then your top. And once you have that in, you're just gonna give this a good mashing all the way around. And then you lift and you can pull this up immediately and place it into a flower former or you can actually let it sit here and rest a little bit and it will continue to maintain this form. I don't know if you can see all of that detail in the back and all of that detail on the front. I'll just bring it a little bit closer. Yeah, come on in. Good. We We're playing with poinsettias. You play with me? Yes, I would love for you to. So I've just started by creating the first larger petal. And I'm placing that into just the egg shape former to allow it time to dry. I hear something. <laughs> That's all right. So these are the botanically correct veiners and cutters from Sugar Delights under their label, uh, Simply Nature. So they've taken the time to create truly botanically correct veiners um, that hold every little dimple every little vein, every little lump and bump in the flowers. So in the past, I used to spend hours creating all of that by hand and it never looked real. So, you know, and there's so much, there's only so much, um, how do I say this, time investment that I'm willing to give. So the fact that this really makes this much faster is great for me because you know my attention level is very short. And I'm using just small amounts of um, gum paste at a time so I can keep it super pliable. And then I'm rolling it fairly thin, but it's not like, I'm not trying to go as thin as I would if I were doing individual rose petals. And then once I have that suitably corn starched, and this is something else I love about botanically correct veiners, is that each of their Veiners has a matching cutter. Is that not crazy? So again, roll your gum paste fairly thin and then place your cutter straight down. Give it a little wiggle 
and pull it back up. Put your excess gum paste away so it doesn't go dry out. And then I have our foam board and I'm going to take my ball tool and just run the ball tool along the outside edge. Half of the ball tool is on the foam board and half of it is actually on the pedal. And then once I have the edges suitably thinned, then I can take and put it into the veiner. And these are fairly thin edges. Veiner has a top and a bottom, so I'm conscious of that. Place the top and the bottom together, sandwich the guy in between, and give her a little smash. A little smash. And the veiner gives you a true hint of which way is up and which way is down. So I'm going to make sure I put this in the former with the vein in the middle so these petals have folded upward with the outside edges. You can leave it in the veiner and allow it to set up a little bit in this exact form. The detailing on the back, oh my gosh. Every little vein. every little lump and bump. So I have both egg-shaped formers and I have foam formers to play with. Um, I haven't decided which one I like better with the poinsettia yet, but I think it's gonna be the foam formers because I can go at a slight diagonal, like go through at a diagonal, put that vein in place, and then I can kind of bow out the leaves And a poinsettia comes with petals in odd numbers. So like the top three petals are in threes and then it goes like fives and fives. So they're all in odd numbers along the stem. Pass this over and let you play with a smaller one. Is this a set? It is, together? it is a full set. So it, the cutters and the veiners are separate, but the poinsettia veiner set was five individual size petals and then it came with the, the other set with five individual size cutters. I wish we could turn this into a full, we should turn this into a full-fledged class and make beautiful poinsettias. Yeah. And I move that ball tool where, yeah, where it's almost on the foam. Yep. And you can see there, I didn't quite swiggle enough, so I didn't break free of my gum paste, but it's really no big deal. These little guys are so tiny. Thanks for joining today. All right, I've got my three tiniest of tiny petals. I thought I would do all three at once, make my life a little bit faster. This brand also has centers, like the stamen centers. Um, I, I don't think I have the poinsettia center in stock right now, but I have a dogwood and it's kind of similar. Um, but basically, it's an, a silicone mold that you would press all your gum paste into, allow it to sit for a minute, pop it out, and then detail as necessary, as needed.
My process always starts the same. I do a thin gum paste and then I thin the edges and that makes a petal look like a real petal, even if you have a thicker center. And I will often leave my center thick enough to hold wires. So I will work the gum paste and thin it around the outside edges. <laughs> That's just phenomenal to me. I just can't get over how much detail is in that little veiner and how it's got the, the depth. yeah. Yeah, I, I made, I mashed this one a little bit too hard. So I've got a couple of loose areas that are trying to peel out, but just a gentle tug and it should be okay. Now remember the vein is going to be inset a little bit deeper and that's how you know this is the top side versus the bottom. Whereas this way is the top. If that made any sense at all. Words, words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they have taken great care to make each petal slightly different too. Are you just thinning or are you ruffling? I'm just thinning on these because there's not a huge amount of ruffle on a poinsettia. You can certainly work harder and thin them at a greater depth. But I did give it a little bit on the edge of the ball tool. I'm going to borrow this guy a second. So I have discovered I prefer, I do prefer the um, foam for the smaller petals, but I think I like the egg carton, the egg mold for the larger ones. Although next time I would probably, I would probably take a minute and put something underneath here to make it poof upwards instead of just going into a bowl shape. But that's one of the beauties of being able to put it in your molds yourself for shaping is you can bury them too. So some can be curled up, some can be poofed up and out. So I'm just going to make a couple more of these and then we'll go into coloring because I think that's what makes these. Veining is fantabulous, all of those details, but then we got we to gotta enhance it. No. I could never get that much veining. I could try really hard, but my gum paste would dry before I even got halfway through. So these are so fast. So if I were working this to run a wire into it, I would focus on the outer edges. So I would do my first roll and I would focus on my outer edges to continue opening it up but I would leave this middle section right here kind of thick so I could insert the wire. And then I would roll the top edge thinner as well. So basically this right here stays thick and then these outer edges are thinned out. I really don't have plans to put any wires in this. I'm just gonna build them up. <laughs> Oh, I forgot my cutter. <laughs> I was like, it's not fitting. What did I do wrong? All right, that wiggle ensures that it releases and cuts all the way through. Be sure to always wrap up your gum paste so it doesn't dry and harden. Foam board, foam mat, ball tool of any type or style. And just gently flatten out the outside edges. And this is important position of the ball tool. It definitely needs to be halfway on, halfway off the edge to get that ruffle. 
If you're just on the inside, all you're doing is thinning out that portion. You want to be halfway on and halfway off. Now, if I were doing a wire, I wouldn't thin this bottom portion. That's where the wire is going to go. I'm just going to focus on the sides around that. Take a minute to get your top and bottom situated. Place it in, and I like to use my finger just to position that down into the middle crease and making sure I'm still within the edges of my veiner. And then put the top and the bottom together, give that a little smash. Hey Monica, I see you. So if you want to join in live, we're actually going to be on YouTube channel. So we're very limited on what Facebook Live is going to do for us. You've got to switch over to YouTube slash C slash Art is in Cakes. And that's where you're going to get all of the fantabulous camera angles. Plus, the whole thing will be posted afterwards. So for those who are joining in on Facebook Live, switch over to YouTube slash C slash art is in cakes and for those of you who are hanging out with me on youtube thanks for hanging out and for those of you who are live thanks for hanging out <laughs> so we do live feed of our friday workshops Fri friday noon workshops and i love it when fantabulous people show up and join me because then i feel like i'm not you know just talking to the camera which is really weird by the way uh, I get to ramble and I get um, actual responses, which makes me feel fantastic. Because otherwise I'm like, and I'm just talking, I'm just talking. So for those of you who are curious, Facebook Live stopped playing fairly. They stopped playing nicely. So the first few uh, weeks that I had my Fantabulous camera system, I was able to stream all camera angles and camera views to Facebook Live. But then they had some, you know, that whole privacy issue. When that happened, they shut down the ability to stream from all of my camera system. You're curious what I'm talking about. I'm just going to lift this up and say, hi. But there's my camera system intended to transport everything through to our viewing monitor as well as Facebook Live. Hey, there's nobody left on Facebook Live. Yay, you've all switched over. Sweet. <laughs> See you on YouTube. OK, here we go. So now you ready to do some coloring? Yes. All right, me too. So I have a variety of luster dusts. When poinsettia petals start to turn color, I love that I can see the greens and the yellows, the pinks, and then that hint of red. So I have all of those lusters here. I have them all. And I'm going to put just a smidge in my um, lid, and I'm going to bring these guys to you. Thank you. And. I'm not even going to bother with the painter's palette since it's just us. I'm just going to go straight into the lusters. I've got a little bit of Old Rose, one of my all-time favorites. Thank you. Um, I've got Old Rose twice. I must really like that color. I've got a little bit of Raspberry. This one's a little bit different in that it has a tiny touch of actual luster to it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it will add shine to the petal. I kind of prefer um, straight-up blossom dusts when I'm working petals. Oh, this guy. I had to use my bottle opener last time. Oh, there we go. And I don't think this is truly terracotta anymore. I think this is my own personal blend. <laughs> yeah, something I needed for a wedding cake. All righty. So I like to luster on paper towel because it prevents all of the um, petal dust from staining my foams and my formers. Um, Sometimes I wear gloves for that same purpose. But we're just going to use a really soft brush. And the softer, the better. And it does not matter if you have used this for various other colors. We're kind of in the same color family. So we get most of the dust off. 
but my petal, uh, my bristles might be permanently stained, but no biggie. All right, so I love taking a little bit of this green and working it in areas. And it's a tiny smidge of dust. If you overdo the dust, the colors kind of muddle together. And when it does that, you almost end up with a brown at the end. Um, your end result's not quite as pretty as you would expect. And I'm just picking areas. Now, the larger leaves at the bottom may be still slightly green. So I am putting a little more green on this leaf on the bottom. And then I'm just switching over and adding hints of yellow. And this is a very bold yellow, a little dabble do ya. And you can actually take your brush and just brush where the tops of the little divots make themselves little mountains. So instead of getting down the valleys, I kind of diagonal stroke this and just brush the tops to get color on the tops only. And then I'm gonna focus on these reds. And I'm going to push the red down into the veins. I started with lobster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess it's yeah, it's old rose actually. Not necessarily. And if you get too much on your brush, just tap it off on your paper towel before trying to transfer back over. I think this is where the art form of this comes in. So you determine the color, the depth of color. I do really like the cranberry color and the um, old rose. But you can see by coloring, it's kind of cool, the darker colors are seeping down into the veined areas and you get those highs and lows and you get those shadows. So just to let you see, that's what it looks like dry dusted on the top so far. So you get those highs and lows. You start to see those divots. I feel like I've got a lot of yellow here, so I'm going to temper it with just a touch of yellow on this side. And then you have to do the back side too. Ah. So remembering kind of where your color placement was. My green was on this side of the petal. Hints of color, this is important, hints of color. If I wanted a darker red, a darker red poinsettia, I would start with a darker red gum paste first. Hey, Lola Divine, how are you doing? Hey, we've switched over to YouTube. Um, YouTube slash C slash art is in cakes will let you see everything that's going on from multiple camera views. Hey, if you've got a Gmail account, head over to YouTube slash C slash Artisan Cakes, subscribe to our channel and watch this live from multiple camera angles. So instead of just seeing this point of view, you'll see from above, you'll see a side angle and you'll see a lot more definition and detail. So head over there, I'd love to see ya. And I'm going to just keep on coloring this guy. I gotta turn it over occasionally so I can remember where I put my colors. The tiny little onions show up on the back. I know, it's so crazy. So, when you rub the back with the darker colors, you see every one of those little tiny details. 
everyone. It's just crazy. But obviously, Sugar Delights has put a lot of attention into the detail, and they have actually said that they use real flowers when they're creating their veiners. So they've taken the time to really do a true study. So you're guaranteed to have something that's quite like competition ready. So there's my finished petal with the hints of color in various places. Again, I kind of feel like this is kind of heavy with the green here. So I'm going to put a little bit of green here to help this composition feel a little less spotty. And the last thing I would do is steam this or airbrush it lightly to set these colors into the gum paste. Setting the colors will prevent it from staining as you're putting it on your cake, but it also increases the vibrancy of the colors. So it actually sets the color into the petal itself. Um, you can also airbrush it lightly. Um, you can use a little bit of Everclear or vodka and just airbrush lightly, and that will help set the color as well, too. You have to be very careful, though, not to overdo it. Oversaturation, it'll just start beating up and kind of running down your petal. One of the things I like about steaming and airbrushing, too, is it gives a natural shine to the petal once it sets those colors. So I would let this continue drying. So and then... Flat, the steam will flat it? If, okay. As long as you've let it... Yeah, you're just going to do a very short burst of steam. And a lot of people prefer to use just like the generic $15, $19 steamer from uh, Walmart. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't get too hot, <laughs> but it just provides enough steam to psh, 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 psh. Cool. You got to do the sound effects. Psh, 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 psh. <laughs> All right, you want to do any other petals? No. Yeah, let's do some more petals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass the vayner over. Do you want any more uh pieces or yeah I'm just gonna play with color too we just want to play with color yeah um, we were talking about these stamens you can make a poinsettia the center little berries fairly easily by hand um, but you can also buy molds for it so why not just buy the mold push your gum paste in pop it out you're done stick a wire in it yay yeah um, when I'm using wires I use two gauges so my center wire is usually a firmer wire, and this may be anywhere from a 16 to a, a 20 gauge, depending on how much flexibility I want. You guys know that um, the smaller the number, the thicker the wire. Took me forever to remember that. Smaller the wire, the higher the number. So this is a 22 wire, and it's super thin, uh, super thin. And this is what I would use for my leaves. Of course, you want to insert your wires before you put your leaves into your formers. That way you have a moment that you can bend your wire and shape it slightly and then place it into your former. Don't ever try to form it and then insert it. It'll be too hard, unable to do it. For those of you who have just joined us on Facebook Live, we have full camera angles available to you on our YouTube channel. That is YouTube slash C slash Art is in Cakes. Join us over there. So you're getting a very limited view here. Head over there and you'll see top view, side view. And we'll vary up the camera angles a bit. So we've been working at this for about mm, 30 minutes already. I have one beautiful petal. Yay! I could spend hours coloring it. But as far as the veining, wow, how simple was that? It literally is a matter of just cutting out your gum paste using the provided cutters and then placing them top and bottom into the veiner, pressing them together, sandwich style, and then out pops this beautiful petal ready to color. We put it in our veiners. I found I like the um, egg crate veiner, or veiner, egg crate foam better 
because I can press down the centers and create more poofs and more realism. When I put it in the egg shape uh, chocolate form, it just kind of wants to bowl, which is fine for a lot of petals. Roses are perfect, peony petals are perfect, but it's just a little off for a poinsettia. So poinsettia would be do, do best in the egg crate foam. Now I know I'm gonna have to invest in every shade of red imaginable. <laughs> so that I can make all kinds of colors of poinsettias. We use a variety of colors in our petals because if you look at nature, nature has put tons of color in their petals. It's not a flat color. So I'm using a little bit of old rose blossom dust and a little bit of the cranberry and then a hint of the green and a hint of yellow in just a few little places. And that luster dust allows the petals to pick up every little divot, dent. It's like your eye sees the depth in the petal now. If you use yellow, use just a small amount. And remember to set that color, you're gonna use steam or potentially an airbrush um, with a little bit of Everclear or vodka. And these are veiners and cutters that we carry here by Sugar Delights and it is their um, Simply Nature line, which I absolutely love. And they've taken the time to put every single little detail in every single petal They've taken the time to do a top and a bottom so your petals are always going to be fully three-dimensional. They're not gonna be flat on one side. You don't have to worry about hiding the back side. You do have to worry about coloring the back side. <laughs> yeah, I could spend hours coloring. And one thing we mentioned was make sure you don't use too much dust. The more dust you use, the muddier the colors get, especially with a mixed palette. We've got five different colors here. These are so pretty. You really can't mess these up. They're fantastic. If you have questions about the Sugar Delight veiners and their matching cutters, please feel free to give us a call at 501-240-6102 or check us out on our website, artisincakes.com. Um, in the search bar at the top, just type in <laughs> veiners, V-E-I-N-E-R-S, or botanically correct, or Sugar Delight, and you should see everything that we carry. Let us know if we're missing something and you want to buy it. We'd be happy to contact Sugar Delights and say, hey, we need more. We love them. Hints of green, not too much. I mean, just, just look at that. I mean, that is way more depth than I have ever been able to get. Ever. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, let's try that again. Hey, <laughs> look at that. That is way more depth than I've ever been able to get. <laughs> uh, see, and this is why I need you here. <laughs> Who else is going to be telling me I'm on the wrong camera? So camera one, uh-huh, and camera two, yeah. <laughs> so we host these live workshops every Friday, 12 noon. And for $10, you can come in and actually play with the materials <laughs> and talk to me, keep me company, and tell me what camera I'm on. <laughs> One of these days, I'm gonna create a bloopers reel because I have like <laughs> hours of blooper footage. So this is unpainted. Look, I mean, can you see all that detail? Is there enough dimension up there? Can you see that? Oh my gosh. 
And that is just the back side. I mean, the front side's beautiful too. <laughs> I, you know, it was um, something we were doing for a special request on a wedding. Um, so that terracotta color, terracotta color morphed into more of a burgundy. It was really hard to find the burgundies to match. Um, and it was a very specific satin ribbon we were trying to match. I am not afraid to play with colors and mix it all together until I make the correct match. That is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Let's lay some of these together. When you start layering in your pieces, you get a real sense. I haven't colored this one yet, but you get a real sense of what it's going to look like in its layers. And remember, this becomes more vibrant once you've sprayed it with a little bit of uh, steam or airbrush. Straight up uh, Everclear, just a little slight amount. Oh, that was nice. I don't know what I just knocked over. Okay. So here's what we've been playing with. These are poinsettia petals. And they are created using Sugar Delight's veiner sets that have a ton of veining and details and they're matching cutters. These are cutters that have actually been sized, scaled to match their veiners right down to the little divots. So once you cut out your um, gum paste and you do, you do take your ball tool around and thin your edges, it is a perfect match to the veiner. So there's no more guessing. Um, you'll be able to place your gum paste directly into the veiner, smash it together, and you get all of this detail. So this is what the detail looks like before you start coloring. I don't know if you can see all those beautiful little pillow poofs and all of those. Can you guys see that? I mean, there's so much detail in the veining. But the hard part is seeing that dimensionally. So as soon as you start adding the color, it really picks up all of those details. That's my favorite part. And the veiner sets for the poinsettia come with five different sized veiners, front and back. And then the cutter set also comes with the five matching. I also have a larger poinsettia leaf if you really wanted to do an extended version. Maybe you're creating a uh, potted poinsettia plant as a cake. Um, you could totally do the cake as the pot and then turn right around and add a thick wire stem. And using that thick wire stem, you can build up, build up your petals to create an actual poinsettia. They're bigger than these? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's the uh, extra large poinsettia leaf that's even bigger. Any questions today? No, but I think this should be a full class. I do too. We should make a poinsettia cake with a pot that's a cake. Yes. All right, so I'm getting ready to sign off from both YouTube and from Facebook Live. For those of you who joined us live, I appreciate you coming back over here to YouTube. For those of you who are hanging out with me on YouTube, I appreciate that too. And Miss Karen, I love having you here. <laughs> thanks, thanks for being my live person so I don't feel quite so awkward. So we do this every Friday, Friday at noon. Um, most of these videos are in the process of being edited, edited 
Yeah, because I got a little bit of a blooper reel going on. These are in the process of being edited and will eventually be either short tutorials on YouTube that you can browse through versus listening to the whole 45 minutes, or they will be full length on our Vimeo channel coming soon. Cool beans, right? All right, thank you everybody, and we will talk to you next Friday if you don't come by and talk to me sooner. <laughs>